So what kind of language is C? First off, I would say it's definitely an imperative language. That is, a C program is basically a sequence of actions. And those actions often have side effects on data. Data gets changed as the actions execute. Secondly, C is a procedural language, meaning that C code is made up of basically just functions. In that sense, C is actually very similar to what you've already seen in Pidgin, and in fact what you'll see in most any other language. The biggest difference from Pidgin is that C is not a dynamically typed language, it's a statically typed language. And like assembly language, C is also weakly typed. So while the static typing means that the compiler checks to make sure we don't misuse any piece of data as the wrong type, in the end C allows us to thwart these checks such that we can treat any piece of data as just a bunch of bytes to manipulate in arbitrary ways. Hence static yet weakly typed. The feature of C that makes it unlike any other language other than assembly and the derivatives of C, Objective-C and C++, is that C gives the programmer a very high degree of control over memory. In fact, in C, if you want, you could individually manipulate in any way any byte of memory that's available to your program. This is why many people have said that C is like a portable assembly language. You can write a program in C so that it compiles and executes on different processor platforms, but you still have a very high degree of control over exactly what is going on in memory. And the main benefit of this is that you can structure your data in precisely the way you need it. You can make it as compact as you want, or you can organize it in some custom way that's particular to some algorithm you're implementing. In other languages like Pidgin, as you saw, we can't just fall back on treating our data as just raw bits and bytes, because we don't have precise control. The cost of this control is that when we program in C, we have to manage our own memory, meaning when we create some data structure on the heap, we have to then explicitly deallocate that memory when we're done with it. If for whatever reason we fail to eventually deallocate memory, what tends to happen in a long-running program in particular is that the program just consumes more and more memory, which leads to the system slowing down and eventually the process just maybe fails and gets terminated. One more important aspect of C is that it has a regular calling convention. The term calling convention refers to the precise way in which code uses the registers and stack on a particular processor to implement function calls. Where exactly do you put the arguments to a function, and where do you put the return value? The consequence of having a consistent predictable calling convention in C is that it then allows you to easily link together C code and code written in assembly. So in a C program, you can invoke functions written in assembly code, and in assembly code, you can invoke functions written in C. Now, linking with assembly code is something that's doable in any programming language in principle, just in, in practice, it's much easier in C. Particularly when you're using, say, an interpreted language. Yes, it's doable, say, to call from Java functions written in assembler, or say, functions written in C. It's just that it's a bit clumsy, and also you get a bit of this overhead every time you transition from the code in the interpreter to the code that's written just in assembly or C. When linking C to assembly, you just don't have those problems. When you call an assembly function from C, there's no more overhead in calling that function than if you were to call just a regular C function. So because C is a uniquely efficient language, and because it provides you near total control over memory, second only to what you get in assembly, C is the most used language in a few domains. C is most used in what's called systems programming, which refers mainly to operating systems and device drivers and other things having to do with the low-level software of the system. So say the Linux kernel and its device drivers are written mainly in C. The Windows kernel, we can't know for sure because it's closed code, but it's reported to be uh, mainly in C++, which as I discussed is pretty close to just being C with the addition of classes. Aside from systems programming, C and C++ are basically the default choices in any area of code that needs higher performance. So say the large majority of games written for Windows are written in C++, so say Doom 3, Half-Life, those are written in C++. Basically, the way it works out is that the Microsoft world tends to favor C++ over C, whereas the Linux and BSD crowds, they favor C over C++, and then on the Apple side, they favor Objective-C.